we're going to solve an interesting problem here of a longitudinal member like this one here subjected to normal stress at both ends sigma and welded somewhere in the middle at an angle theta so in this case uh, this could be a weld or a connection of any kind with any kind of adhesive but the idea is that we have here a connection at an angle that as you will see generates two kinds of stresses normal and shear stress to begin to understand that consider this free body diagram right here of the left side i could have drawn the right hand side too but uh, it's the same thing just opposite so this stress generates a total force p which in this case is equal to sigma times the cross-sectional area, right, at this perpendicular to the surface. That P is going to be resisted by two forces, one which is perpendicular to the surface, the inclined surface, and one V which is parallel to that surface. If you compute the resultant of these two, you have to obtain P going that way, to oppose P going this way. And so using simple trigonometry, we can find the value of V and N. Right? V would be P times cosine of theta while N, the normal force, would be P times sine of theta. Right? This is the same as that, and that's the opposite side to the angle. This one is the adja adjacent side, so it goes with cosine, and N goes with sine. Now, to get the stress, we have to now divide these forces by their corresponding inclined area. Okay? And so, if we look at the geometry of this again, this area here, this dimension is A. Let's say we're dealing with something like a rectangle, so it has a constant width. And so it, it basically all boils down to this length, right? The inclined length. So since that's A, what is this length? Well, we're going to call that A prime. And that's going to be what? That's going to be A divided by the sine of theta, right? Because this is theta right here. And what we know, if we look at the triangle, we know this and we want to get this. And that angle right there is theta. So sine of theta is A divided by A prime. So solving for A prime, we get A divided by sine of theta. And now we are in a position to compute the stresses. So the shear stress, V divided by A prime, right? Because that's the surface on which V is acting upon. So we get P cosine of theta divided by A divided by sine of theta, 
which comes out to P over A, but P over A is sigma, the original stress applied at the end. And so we have sigma times cosine theta times sine theta. And in the case of the normal stress acting again on this surface, so that's the surface perpendicular to N, it's going to be N divided by A prime, which is P times sine of theta divided by A divided by sine of theta, which comes out to P over A again, sigma times sine of theta squared. And so the, the basic result is that on this surface here, we have two stresses now. So we have one stress pulling this way perpendicular, but once we incline the surface, two stresses appear. Shear going this way, plus an axial stress in tension, normal stress going this way. Sigma, and this one is tau. The key idea here, in addition to the calculations that we've carried out, is the fact that these stresses do not transform, do not change in terms of the coordinate system, like a vector would, right? This is a vector transformation. We have a vector going horizontally, and we're breaking it down into two orthogonal components this way. But the stresses do not behave in that way. You can see there is sine theta squared and sine and cosine here. Why does that happen? Well, the fundamental reason is that vectors are a different type of quantity than stress. Stresses are tensors, not vectors. And tensors have a different math in order to transform from one coordinate system to another, which is rotated at any angle of theta. And so basically you need to begin to understand that the quantity that we call stress is fundamentally different from quantities like force and displacement. They, they change in a completely different way. And we're going to develop that theory when we get to something called Morse circle. And uh, it says geometrical construction that helps to understand this whole idea of stress transformation on an inclined surface.